Hey guys, this is part two of my introduction to classes and objects. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how multiple classes and objects can interact with each other. So let's get started. Now, just a quick recap of the last video. We created this class called robot with the three attributes, name, color, and weight. Name was a string, color was a string as well, and weight was an integer. And it had only one function called introduce self. And when this function is run, it will just print out my name is name, whatever the name is. And then out of this class, we created two objects. The first one was this one, a robot object with the name Tom, color red, and weight 30 to show that it's 30 pounds. And the second object was a robot object with the name Jerry, color blue, and weight 40. And we put the first object in this variable called R1. And then we put the second object in this variable called R2. Now let's say on top of that, we have another class here. This class is going to be called person to represent any person you want to represent. And it's going to have three attributes. Name, which is going to be a string. Personality, which is also going to be a string. And is sitting, which is going to be a boolean, which means this is going to be either true or false. And if this is true, that will mean that this particular person is sitting. And if this value is false, that'll mean that this person is not sitting. Using this class, we'll be able to create a couple of objects here as well. And the first object here might look like this. This is going to be a person object, of course, with the name, Alice, personality, aggressive, and is sitting false. So this person is not sitting, she's probably standing. And the second object here might look like this. This is a person object with the name Becky, personality, personality talkative, and is sitting true. And let's put the first object here, the person named Alice, to this variable called p1. And then let's put the second object here to p2 to show that this is person 1 and this is person 2. And let's say this person class has a few methods or a few functions as well. Sit down and stand up. All they're going to do is going to be pretty simple. When you run sit down this function on let's say this particular object p1 by saying p1 dot sit down, it'll just turn the is sitting value to true because that person will be sitting. And then if the is sitting value is already true, when you run sit down on that object, it'll just stay at true. And the same thing with stand up, it's just going to do the opposite. So if you run stand up on p2 by writing p2 dot stand up, it's going to turn the is sitting value to false. And then if it's already false, it's just not going to do anything. Now having these two classes and these two sets of objects separately is fine. But is there any way to somehow make them interact with each other and somehow show the relationships between these two sets of objects? One situation when you might want to do this is, for example, when you want to say that a person, a particular person, owns a particular robot. So for example, this person named Becky might own this robot named Tom, and this person, Alice, might own this other robot, Jerry. So how can we express that? One way to show that is having an extra attribute to the person class. And that attribute might be called something like robot owned. This is going to be the particular robot that's owned by this person. And this is going to be a robot object. So for example, if you want to show that Alice owns Jerry, which is in this variable called R2, you can just set the robot owned attribute of this person object to R2. And this is going to show that P1 owns R2. And then you can do the same thing for P2, Becky. If you want to show that this person owns this robot, which is in the R1 variable, you can just set the robot own attribute of this person to R1. And this is one very common way of expressing the relationships between multiple classes and objects. OK, let's now see how we can actually implement that using code. I'm going to use Java as an example here, but other languages like Python are going to be usually pretty similar. 
And let's just quickly recap what we did in the last video. We defined a class called robot by writing class robot curly brackets. And this class had three attributes or three instance variables, string name, string color, and integer weight. And we also defined a constructor for creating a new object out of this class. And that one took three arguments, string n, string c, int w, and it created a new object and set that object's name, this dot name, to n, and that object's color, that new object's color, to c, and that weight, that object's weight, to w. And this class had one method too, of course, introduce self, and that one printed, my name is whatever this object's name is. And then we use the constructor that we define ourselves to create a couple of objects. The first object had the name Tom, color red, and weight 30, and so on. And then we were able to, of course, use this function introduce self by writing r1.introduce self and r2.introduce self. And just a quick note, if you want to implement this yourself, you'll be able to put both of these blocks of code in a single file. And then for me, I'm going to call it test robot and person Java. And you'll be able to find a link to this file in the description below as well. Okay, moving forward to implement what I explained earlier, each person owning a particular robot, let's create a person class by writing, of course, class person curly brackets. And then this person class will have these attributes, string name, string personality, and boolean is sitting. And of course, boolean just means that is sitting will be either true or false. And then to show that each person owns a particular robot, we'll need to add another attribute, of course, called robot owned. And this robot owned, the value of this attribute will be a robot object. So the type of this attribute will need to be robot. And then just like we did with the robot class, we can create a constructor here as well. This constructor is going to be called person because we need to call a constructor the same name as the class. So this is person, which takes three arguments, string n, string p, and boolean, i. And then once we create this object by using this constructor, this dot name, that new object's name will be n, the given string. And then this new object's personality will be p, which is another given argument. And then that object's is sitting attribute, is sitting instance variable will be the given i. And let's just quickly define the other methods we had in this class as well. One of them was called sit down. This is just going to simply set this object's is sitting value to true. And then the opposite of sit down, which is stand up, that one sets this object's is sitting instance variable or attribute to be false. And note here that if this that is sitting is already false when you run stand up, this is not going to do anything because it's basically resetting this value to be false again. Okay, at this point, you can create a person object by saying new person, Alice, aggressive, and false. So this is going to create a new person object with the name Alice, personality aggressive, and is sitting false. And we can assign that to a variable called p1 with the type person. And let's do the same thing for a second person object. This person's name will be Becky, personality will be talkative, and she will be sitting. So is sitting will be true. And then we're going to put that in p2. After that, if you want to show that the first person here, Alice, owns the second robot here named Jerry, it's going to be pretty simple. You just need to write p1 dot robot own equals r2. And this sets the attribute, the robot own attribute of p1 to r2. And then we can do the same thing for p2 as well. If you want to show that the second person, Becky, owns the first robot, Tom, you can just write p2 dot robot own equals r1. And that way, p2's robot own attribute will be r1. And once you have that in place, you'll be able to do stuff like this as well. 
here I just wrote p one dot robot own dot introduce self. So basically, p one dot robot own will give us r two because that's the robot p one owns, and so this line is the same as saying r two dot introduce self. So when you execute this line, this is gonna print out my name is Jerry because that's the name of R2. And then we can do the same thing with P2 here, the second person. So once we write P2 dot robot own dot introduce self, P2 dot robot own will give us R1. So this is the same as saying R1 dot introduce self. And of course, this line, once executed, will print out my name is Tom because that's the name of R1. So that's how you can express the relationships between robots and person objects. But can we do something similar within the same class? So for example, what if you had these five robots and each of them can be expressed as a robot object? And what if you wanted to show that, for example, these two robots are friends with each other and these two robots are friends with each other and so on. Or it could be something like, this robot is looking at this other robot, and this robot is looking at this robot, and so on. How can we show something like this? Well, it'll actually be pretty similar to what we saw earlier. So let's take a look at the robot class here. So far, it's the same. It's exactly the same as what we had earlier. We have name, color, and weight as attributes, and then robot constructor, and then the introduce self function. All you need to do on top of this is you just need to add an extra attribute called, let's say, looking at. So this is going to be the robot. This particular robot is currently looking at, and this is going to be a robot object. And so the type here is robot. So if you want to say, for example, that the first robot, Tom, is looking at the second robot, Jerry, you just need to set the looking at attribute of R1 to R2. You can do that just like that by saying R1 dot looking at equals R2. And then if you want to show also that R2 is also looking at R1, you can just write this R2 dot looking at equals R1. And that sets the looking at attribute of R2 to R1 so that R2 is now looking at R1 as well. So this was a little bit silly example, you know, a bunch of robots just looking at each other, but you'll be able to use exactly the same idea to implement more realistic things too. So for example, if you're trying to implement a Twitter-like system or an Instagram-like system, you wanna be able to say, this robot is following this other robot, or this person is following this other person, and then this person is following this person, and so on. To show something like that, you can just change the name of this looking at attribute from looking at to following, and then pretty much do exactly the same thing as what we did earlier. Okay, so that wraps up my introduction to classes and objects. If there's any related topic that you want me to cover in the future though, just let me know in the comment below. And special thanks to Brilliant Dorog for sponsoring this video. So in my next video in this series, I'm planning to cover the topic of linked lists. But actually, once you understood the concepts you learned in this video, you'll be able to start learning you know, more advanced data structures like graphs and trees. So if you want to jump ahead and start learning these concepts on your own, you might want to check out Brilliant. In their computer science algorithms course, they have a section about graphs and I think this would be perfect for someone who's just starting to learn data structures and algorithms. Like I said in my previous videos, solving problems is a really good way to solidify the computer science knowledge you've gained passively by watching videos or reading something. I think Brilliant can be a good complement to this course because it gives you a good way to practice what you've learned through solving problems. So if you want to complement your passive learning, with more active learning like solving problems, just go to brilliant.org slash csdojo. This will let them know that you came from here and you get 20% off their annual subscription through that link too. Okay, thanks as always for watching my videos. 
And thanks so much for being part of Dojo Gang. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.